Your swing, you have a great backswing. Is there ever any comparisons to your backswing to anybody in the past or maybe even present? I don't know, you know. I think uh, I get my follow through through Mike Eastler. I think there's been there's some guys who have tremendous follow throughs in the game now with uh, Fred McGriff and Ryan Klesko uh, has a great follow through also. I think that just comes from from uh, from practicing. I think it's, it's something that's very necessary. Get necessary. It gives you good extension and lets the ball carry for you. So that's just something that, I, that I've uh, tried to develop. You look at... Uh, when you played in all the All-Star games, what was maybe the greatest thrill being in one of those All-Star games? You, can you think of anything? Well, they were all thrilled. You know, I was in 15 of them, so uh, it was a lot of fun because you get to see the guys. You know, you never, you know, you played in America, the National League. You don't get to see them guys during the season. You got to see them. In the like World Series, do you have one particular thrill that might stick out? Well, the one down Larson pitch, 1956. We played 125 years. It's still, it's only been one, one no hitter. And you were the catcher. Did he ever shake you off? No, he didn't. That's one thing I could say. He didn't shake me off. So you must have done a good job. Well, he did. He <laughs> got ahead of every hitter. Uh, he's only behind on one hitter. That was Pee Wee Reese. He only threw three balls to one hitter. That's it. What changes would you make? Well, the first thing I would try to do is get rid of the designated hitter, number one. Number two, I would try to convince the base Major League Baseball players to become more of role models, to spend more time talking to the youngsters of this country on how important it is for them to get a good education. That education opens many doors to success. And also the fact is if they spend more time trying to impress upon the youngsters to stay away from illegal drugs, that uh, number one, it's against the law. Number two, it's harmful to their body. Number three, all it will do is lead them down the path of destruction. And I believe that those youngsters would listen more to those major league players in some instances even quicker than they would their own parents. Were you getting uh, antsy? when you started thinking about the record and everything else? Well, one doesn't really think about the records. What, what happened is you guys in the media... <laughs> well, I wasn't alive then, I don't think. Yeah, but you're still in the media today. I'm going to tell them what you're going to be doing <laughs> in the future. Uh, you have a tendency to remind the player uh, uh, how close and how far he is from a record. Uh, most of the time when we are out there performing, and we are a high-level performance, uh, you really don't think about a record. All the thing you know is that you own a streak and things are going well. And then somebody tell you two stolen bases are away from the pace of Murray Wills or Ty Cobb. And you say, oh, gee, that's nice. And they say, what do you think of that? What do I think of that? I, have, I didn't know about that until a second ago. But nevertheless, it is one of the things that fuels the performance itself. It is part of the media. It's part of what people begin to remember, and it's part of history. And so once you get caught up in that, it is no longer your act out there in trying to steal a base but it become part of what the ball club is doing, sanctioned by the ball club, and, uh, and it's fun. That's just as big because those, it meant a lot to those people, too. Another thing you might remember before was the 39-game hitting streak. Uh, you, every day, you were on ESPN. They were saying he's got to face this pitcher. How can he do it? How, you know, Pete Rose went for 44 games and DiMaggio won 56. Could you imagine yourself getting to that 56 level with the media crush, you think? Well, that was one of the few times in Milwaukee that I did receive some national attention. And, uh, but I think I had a pretty good uh, uh, disposition during that streak in terms of uh, not letting it become bigger than the game. I tried to have fun with it. It wasn't like trying to win a pennant the last week of the season. So from, from that standpoint, I was kind of able to enjoy it, even though there was some scrutiny and pressure as the streak built. Uh, naturally, I would like to have seen it gone on as long as possible, but no question, going to 39 and having it stop at that point helped my appreciation just for what hitting in 56 games is all about. I mean, that's 17 more games than, 50, than 39, and not too many guys have 17-game hitting streaks in a season, so I, I definitely appreciate 56-game hitting streak. Good evening. Are you happy about tonight's? Delirious. When, when do you think the fans are going to really feel this? I hope they feel it now. All right. You've built UMass up to where it is right now. Do you think you're still rebuilding, or is it now are you full full going with Lou Rowan? I, I just think it's every year that we come back, and hopefully we're going to be a top 10 or top 20 team and have an opportunity to try to win a national title. We want to be in the hunt every year.